Welcome to Conlang Critic, the show that gets facts wrong about your favorite conlang. I'm Jan Niesely, and this episode we'll be looking at the new international auxiliary language, Novio. The international auxiliary language is a popular genre of conlang, and I'm pretty sure that there's never been a good one. I've looked at IAL after IAL on this show, but every single one I've seen is flawed in some way that prevents it from being good. The bar is so low that I was fine claiming Lingua Franca Nova to be the least bad one I've looked at by default, even though it's got most of the same problems as all the others. I should be clear here that when I say International Auxiliary Language, or IAL, I'm talking about a specific subset of international languages, one even more specific than the clunky name International Auxiliary Language suggests. For my purposes, IAL specifically refers to a global international auxiliary language, a language designed to be used for communication between people who otherwise wouldn't have a language in common common regardless of where the given people are from. This is a specific type of auxlang, which is a specific type of interlang, which is a specific type of conlang. I bring all of this up because in the past I've been inconsistent with terminology, referring to all languages that are even remotely international as interlangs regardless of what goals they have, giving the impression that I for some reason think that all international languages are trying to be IALs. This is part of why for season 3 I am no longer ranking conlangs against each other, and from the feedback I got on the Dothraki episode it seems like you're most mostly good with that change. Anyway, that's enough preamble. What's Novial? Novial is an IAL, first proposed in 1928 in the book An International Language by the late Otto Jesperson, whose surname sounds like an alien doing a very bad job of convincing you of their humanity. Novial was created in direct response to the various failed attempts to implement an IAL that came previously, notably Volapük, Esperanto, Edo, and even some languages I haven't made videos about yet, like Idiom Neutral, Latin Without Inflections, and Interlingue, a language which is completely different from Interlingue, I promise. In an international language, Otto goes through the criticisms that he had for each of these conlangs, making him some sort of, yes, person who critiques constructed languages or something. He felt that much of the reason none of these languages were successful was because they all had flaws that could be, quote, justly and severely criticized by competent authorities. Otto certainly talked a lot of smack, but does his new international auxiliary language succeed where other attempts failed? Novial's consonants are ma, na, ba, da, cha. Sa, sha, ha, the, la, ya, ra. Unlike some other IAL inventories I've seen, I can understand why this is what it is. Novial prioritizes recognizability above pronounceability, but still tries to find some balance between the two. It's clear that a lot of thought was put into this set of consonants. Now you might notice that two of the phonemes on this chart are actually the same thing. The voiceless post-alveolar affricate and the voiceless post-alveolar fricative are completely interchangeable in Novial. So why are they two separate phonemes written in two distinct ways? Well, the reason why has more to do with orthography than phonology, so I'll have to come back to that later. But for now, just know that you're allowed to make the distinction if you want, but if you don't want to, then it's fine. Anyway, time for everyone's favorite segment. What's the most commonly spoken language whose consonant inventory is incompatible with that of this particular international auxiliary language? The only segment of a Conlang review series dedicated to checking exactly who in the world would be able to pronounce the words in a given IAL without needing to learn any new consonants. Let's give it up for your host, the Wikipedia article list of languages by total number of speakers. Welcome to the show, Vio Novio. Now the rules are similar. We'll just go through every language on the Wikipedia article list of languages by total number of speakers until we find the most commonly spoken language that doesn't have at least one sound that can directly correspond to each of the consonants in your inventory. They don't need to be perfect matches for every sound, just close enough. If a language isn't compatible, that means monolingual speakers of that language would be forced to learn how to make at least one new sound in order to be able to speak you. So, Novial, are you ready to play? What's the most commonly spoken language whose constant inventory is incompatible with that of this particular international auxiliary language? English. 1.13 billion speakers. Fully compatible. Mandarin Chinese. 1.12 billion speakers. Makes no distinction between voiced and voiceless fricatives, but can approximate the with a glide. Compatible. Hindi. 615 million speakers. The sound fa is rare outside of loanwords, but perfectly fine being here. Fully compatible. <laughs> Spanish. 534 million speakers. Somewhat of a stretch. Ba and za are allophones of the same phoneme in Spanish, so there's a risk of those being confused for each other. And similarly, ja could be confused with ya. Yeah. Compatible with an asterisk. <laughs> 
French, 280 million speakers. This was specifically cited as one of the principal languages that contributed to Novial's design, and its inventory <laughs> lacks any good equivalent to Novial's glottal fricative. <laughs> Better luck next time, Novial. Now, to be fair, huh isn't the hardest sound to learn how to make. It's literally just exhaling. However, for a monolingual speaker of a language without this sound, being able to perceive it as a meaningful sound can be very challenging. The fact that Otto didn't even remark on this challenge for French speakers learning Novial was quite the blunder on his behalf. And besides, huh, as you saw, the best approximation Spanish speakers have for the voiced affricate isn't actually very good. These are the two sounds in this consonant inventory that I think shouldn't be here. Before moving on, I should acknowledge the rhotic. It's specified as being ideally a trill, r, which makes sense because that's the most common rhotic sound. While I could go without it, it makes sense having it for recognizability. Novial's vowels are e, u, a, o, ah. Uh. Do I have to talk about the five vowel system again? This is the most sensible vowel system for an IAL to use, and there's not really any reason to use anything else unless you want to go for a three vowel system. Does Novial have diphthongs? Technically no, but there are plenty of words with consecutive vowels, and those are allowed to be pronounced as diphthongs if you want. There's also the particle may, which ends with a glide, which is for all intents and purposes the same thing as a diphthong. Novial's phonotactics are never explicitly defined in any of Otto Jesperson's books. Just like with the segmental phonology, recognizability seems to have been prioritized here above pronounceability. But at the very least, there seems to have been more care put into it than, say, Esperanto. While there's nothing as baffling as sci, words like svabre and pseudonimi don't exactly roll off the tongue either. So, what is up with the two distinct, but not really distinct, voiceless post-alveolar sounds? Well, this came as the result of Otto not being able to make up his mind about whether Novial's hush consonant should be written with ch or sh. Clearly a distinction shouldn't be made between the sounds ch and sh, but how can you best write something that intuitively can be pronounced both ways? There is a correct answer to this, the digraph ch. Ch is used for both sounds across different languages. So if you want one thing that intuitively can be read as both sounds, ch is the best option. Otto, however, clearly didn't see it this way, and instead decided not to decide and just make it so that ch and sh both represented the same sound. But, and this is the kicker, speakers are allowed to pronounce them differently if they want. This is amusingly spun as a positive for Novial. Quote, it is perhaps fortunate that there are some points in which we can allow each individuality a full scope without any danger to mutual understanding. Oh, Otto. Anyway, besides that, everything else is spelled unambiguously. Well, almost everything. See, there's also the letter X, which is used for the sequence xa, or its voiced equivalent xa, in free variation. There are, however, some words that write the sequence with ks instead, like accidente and vaccine. Another quirk of the Latin alphabet's use in natural languages gleefully borrowed into Novial is qu for the sequence qua. This use of the letters X and Q is somewhat common for IAL, since it helps preserve the aesthetics of many words. However, I can't help but wonder if this is truly necessary. After all, Indonesian gets along just fine spelling words like excomunicasi with KS and words like qualitas with KU. In general, however, the inconsistencies of Novial's orthography are harmless. While a fully phonetic writing system would of course be preferred, given Novial's goal of recognizability, I completely understand why one wouldn't be used. Texts in Novial appear more natural, for what it's worth, than the same text written phonetically. And besides, it's still far more consistent than most languages that use the Latin alphabet. I mean, it's not like it uses the letter C as a third, unpredictable way of writing the sound cut as a spelling reform proposed six years later or anything. Otto! Why would you do that, Otto? You spent like 1,600 words deliberating what the best way to handle the letter C would be and you came to the right conclusion. Yeah, of course people who like your language aren't going to want to adapt your spelling reform. It's not good. It's a bad spelling reform, Otto. It makes spellings worse. The opposite of what a spelling reform is supposed to do. Ugh. Novial's grammar is, surprise, surprise, designed to be simpler and more regular than most natural languages. There is also a large amount of room for variation in many things, presumably so that you can speak Novial in a way more analogous to your first language. For example, the default word order is subject-verb-object. Because of this, the object of a sentence doesn't need to be marked for the accusative case. Word order alone is enough to indicate this. However, if you want to use a different word order that would require the object of a sentence to be marked, there's a completely optional accusative suffix that you can apply if you want. Nouns are generally marked for number with a consonant suffix in 
the plural, but a noun in its most basic uninflected form has indefinite number, so the vowel a, which usually appears on nouns, can be interpreted as a singular suffix. This system, however, is further complicated by the way Novial handles gender. Nouns in the singular have different suffixes depending on gender. The suffix a is applied for singular nouns in most situations, but the feminine a and masculine o suffixes may be applied in cases where specifying gender is necessary, mirroring the grammatical gender distinction in most Romance languages. It is then this vowel that has the plural suffix added to it. This, by the way, is the ideal way to handle gender in an IAL. You don't have to specify gender, but if you want to, no gender is treated as the default. That's literally all I ask for, a system where it's possible to talk about people without mentioning gender, and where women aren't considered to be a type of man. The bar is practically underground, and yet IALs like Esperanto manage to dig under it anyway. In addition to the gendered suffixes, there's also the suffix um, which Otto describes as a neuter suffix, allegedly used for non-living things, but it's pretty inconsistent. I mean, I'm pretty certain that libre counts as something that's, quote, generally rendered in English by means of a thing, or a circumscription with what is, but it's not librum. Anyway, in addition to number and the optional marking of the accusative, nouns can also be marked for the genitive case with another consonant affix. This gender and case information all cannot be indicated without also specifying number, making that indefinite number form feel more like an afterthought than a fully realized feature of the language. Adjectives, and with the vowel suffix, E, and go before nouns. This suffix is allowed to be, and often is, dropped as long as it isn't ambiguous and still pronounceable. So while facili will sometimes be shortened to facil, simply always keeps its suffix as an adjective. Comparative and superlative forms of adjectives use the particles plu and maxim. Likewise, contrastive and sublative forms use the particles min and minim. Additionally, the equative uses the particle tam. All of these, when used to make comparisons, use the preposition cam. So plu bonicam means better than, tam bonicam means as good as, min bonicam means less good than, maxim boni means best, and minim boni means least good. Adjectives can be formed into nouns by replacing the e ending with the appropriate noun suffix. Adverbs are derived from adjectives with a consonant suffix, turning e into im. There are also various suffixes for more specific types of adverbs, such as grad, roughly meaning extent, so from alti comes altigrad. Verbs in novial are mostly handled using particles, on top of a small set of suffixes. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So first off, the most obvious thing that jumps out right away is how Englishy the system is. Almost every single one of these is loaned directly from English. This isn't necessarily a bad choice, to be fair, as verbs tend to be learned from scratch anyway. What's more important is how the system functions underlyingly, which, oops, is super Englishy again. On one hand, I think doing all of this stuff with particles instead of affixes was a good move. While not all of the source languages use particles over verb conjugation in this way, it's generally easier to move from synthetic to isolating than vice versa. On the other hand, though, there's no consistency with which verb forms get suffixes and which get particles besides just matching what English does. Like, the two participles get suffixes, admittedly the only romance-derived forms in the conjugation table, which happen to correspond with English ing and ed, but then the infinitive takes the particle too, like exactly the same one it does in English and closely related Germanic languages. The future tense, typically marked with sal, can also use the completely separate particle of they, and there's virtually no reason to do that other than to imitate something like a shall-will distinction. Most glaringly, the simple past has two different verb forms with exactly the same meaning. It's the only tense in Novial that uses a suffix, and coincidentally the only one in English, too. And yes, both of these forms are directly derived from English, even though just one would have certainly sufficed. But then that suffix does more than just the simple past tense. The future and perfect particles can both be modified with it to form more complex past tenses. And of course, on top of that, you can stack ha with other tenses to form future perfect and conditional perfect, again, functioning exactly the same as English. And this isn't even mentioning the two passives. Oh, did I mention? Novial has two entire passive voices. Despite being an ox slang, Novial found it necessary to bake in a distinction between passive of being and passive of becoming. For the normal passive, the passive of being, the verb ace is used along with the passive participle. Sure, fine. But then the other passive voice, the passive of becoming, uses the particle bli, but not the passive participle. It works just like all the other particles, including how the past tense is marked by giving it a suffix instead of the actual verb. Like, okay, I get why you might want to distinguish between these things, the change of state as opposed to the state itself, and sure, it's a distinction that some languages do make, but like, come on, wasn't this verb system already complicated enough? Somehow more complicated than the verbs is Novial's expansive suffix system for derivation. Like most other things, it's designed with recognizability in mind over ease of use. So even though nouns end with a by default, nouns derive from verbs end with o instead. 
sometimes. And of course, there's the suffix ire, which, borrowed from Romance languages, somehow turns an apple into an apple tree, but also the number one million into a millionaire. And then, obviously, there's two distinct and equivalent suffixes that turn a noun into a verb, meaning to turn into whatever. Another inconsistency borrowed because Otto just didn't want to choose. As you've surely gathered, Novial is just as Eurocentric as every other major international auxiliary language. This is to be expected. When aiming for maximum recognizability, it's a lot easier to just assume that European languages are representative of the whole world than it would be to actually try to figure out what the most recognizable words for things really are. I mean, actually looking up how to say things in various common languages to determine what the most recognizable word would be is a time-consuming process now in a time when you can just ask a computer to tell you stuff. Imagine how hard it would have been to do that a century ago. Novial's main focus is on the languages most used in international discourse at the time, English, French, and German. Additionally, other languages were examined to help calculate what the most internationally recognizable word for something would be. Well, in Europe at least, but you get the idea. The specific extra languages used were Spanish, Russian, Italian, and, uh, Scandinavian? I assume that that's referring to just the North Germanic family of languages collectively as though they were a singular language. It sort of makes sense seeing how they form a sort of dialect continuum, but it is still weird seeing one of the source languages be something that isn't actually a single language. Anyway, all seven of the source languages are Indo-European, and of those, three are Germanic and three are Romance, leaving Russian as the sole representative of all languages outside of those two families. The end result is that Novil's vocabulary is pretty much entirely Romance and Germanic, slightly more homogenous than Esperanto's mix of Romance, Germanic, and Slavic. This is probably not actually that big of a deal, but a bit more diversity would have been nice, you know? That aside, if you look at specific words in Novial and how they compare to the source languages, you'll see that wherever there's a clear consensus among them, Novial of course has no problem, but whenever there isn't one clear best word for something, the default tends to be Romance rather than Germanic. Boni in particular there, I think, wasn't the best choice, since the Germanic languages here seem to be more in agreement than the Romance languages. Something like Gudi would have been better in my opinion. Here's a pronoun table. Pronouns in general are handled exactly the same as nouns, including the genitive suffix and the use of the gender suffixes for the third-person pronouns. Those third-person pronouns, by the way, are handled as though they were the noun forms of the definite article li. The one exception to this consistency is the first-person plural pronoun, which is nous instead of meis, which is justified because us isn't really the same exact thing as just more than one me. Might as well talk about numbers. Numbers up to ten have basic names as usual, then there's a regular anti suffix for multiples of ten. There's also some suffixes for different forms of each number, including some I didn't bother to put on this chart. That group column there is for referring to a collection of a specific magnitude, like what duo and trio normally mean in English. For numbers between 10 and 100, you just say the word for the multiple of 10, then the word for the ones digit, hyphenating the two unless it's less than 20 for some reason. For larger orders of magnitude, the word for the specific power of 10 is used as a suffix and everything else is still hyphenated. For the powers of 10 themselves, Novial opts for the long scale, with billione meaning a million million instead of a thousand million. Now, the use of the long scale makes sense. It's a more elegant system than the short scale, and it's used by many languages, sometimes including English. However, the fact that any variation at all exists for what the number 1 billion means makes it hard for me to recommend actually using either system for an IAL. Instead, what I think an IAL should do is adapt the SI prefixes, at the very least for numbers beyond a million, since they're both more consistent and more international. Of course, this is irrelevant because objectively speaking, base 10 is just horrible, and any language that wants to be viable should- One more thing to check is how no Novial does on the what do you call Germany test. Names of places are something where there really is a good reason to prefer one language over all others, namely the language spoken in that place. Germany is called a lot of things, but in German it's called Deutschland. If an international auxiliary language calls Germany something that doesn't sound like Deutschland, it fails the what do you call Germany test. So how does Novial do? Well, I guess today's just not your day, Novial. The following is an excerpt from An International Language by Otto Jespersen, provided as the first specimen in the book's final section. It's a translation of a passage from earlier in the same book. Un objectione que el bli ofte fa conter construtet lingues es que les pove nulitem es tan boni cam li natur lingues. Es ver que novial non es tam ricci cam anglum, non tam elegante cam fransum, non tam vigorosi cam germanum, non tam belli cam italianum, non tam nuansosi cam rusum, Non tam hemalit cam nusen patriali lingue, ma merca boni, que omniti boni qualesos, que lon prisa e lauda in nationali lingues, 
Blinu trova cand indigenes parla o scripteles. All in all, while Novial is certainly an improvement over its contemporaries, it still falls short of being a truly universally useful oxlang. However, keeping within its actual intended scope and not extrapolating to our modern, far more interconnected world, Novial mostly accomplishes what it set out to do. Anything I could point to and call needless complexity is only there so that Novial can better suit its needs of translating the nuances of natural languages fairly losslessly. So even though Novial doesn't address all of my problems with the Eurocentric IAL as a concept, it does a decent enough job of being a Eurocentric IAL. I may not like it, but I understand it. And hey, being understood is exactly what Novial wanted. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'll be reviewing the is language.